So you're thinking about taking a cruise in 2022. Well, luckily for you guys, I have already been on two cruises since the restart. And those cruises include the Carnival Horizon, which was a six day sailing. We actually went to Bimini, which we were one of the first cruise ships to ever go to Bimini's cruise port. So that was really awesome. And then the other cruise was a three day on Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. We did a three day getaway to their perfect day at Coco Cay. So let's dive into this video so I can talk about my experiences while cruising during a pandemic so you can see what you can maybe expect. All right, guys, let's get into this. Wait, 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 wait. First of all, before we dive into this video, I got to show you guys this post from Royal Caribbean on their Instagram account. That is me. I'm Joe Pariso. That is my personal Instagram account where I share all my photography from my travels, cruises, no matter what it is, I always post there. Super awesome that Royal posted this. I've actually been in contact with them via DM on Instagram, been in contact with their social media team via email. So they loved all my pictures so far. Hopefully they share more in the future. But anyways, let's get back to the real part of this video. My cruise experience during the pandemic. All right, guys. So first things first, I'm going to talk about some of the differences between Carnival and Royals protocols. So first things first with that and uh, something that was very annoying, even though it was only a three day cruise. If you were fully vaccinated, you had to wear a wristband for the entirety of the cruise. I'm not sure if the unvaccinated had a different color wristband or not, but I believe that unvaccinated people should be the only ones wearing a wristband while on the sailing. And if you are vaccinated, you should be able to have your wrist free, man. I mean, that's just annoying. Sometimes I don't even like wearing my watch. But aside from that, Royal did a good job. Once we got to our cabins, we had free hand sanitizer. We each had three free masks and you were allowed to ask for more masks as the cruise went on, which was really cool. Uh, nobody seemed to give a care about that. If you asked for more from your room steward, he would hand you some more. So that was pretty cool because on Carnival, they didn't give us hand sanitizer and they didn't provide masks, which I don't really care because I have so many masks at this point in the pandemic that didn't bother me anyway. And on that note, that brings me to my next topic and the next difference between Royal and Carnival. On Carnival, they were very polite about asking you to wear your mask where you needed to wear a mask. They made sure you were wearing it above your nose and you weren't cutting any corners, you know, having it down here. If you were drinking, you were allowed to pull your mask down. On Royal, it was a free for all. People had their masks all the way down. They'd walk past staff members where you're supposed to be wearing a mask and they would not have their mask on. Nobody seemed to care. But on Royal, they really pushed washing your hands before going into the buffet. It was super annoying. They were screaming loud, trying to make it fun, not down talking them saying that they were yelling at us to wash our hands, but in a sense they were. I was constantly using hand sanitizer, constantly washing my hands. I don't need somebody to remind me and not let me walk past them until they watch me wash my hands. I did not like that. Britt did not like that. But, you know, I get it. We're in a pandemic. You got to stay clean. You're about to be going through the buffet line, even though you didn't serve yourself on the sailing that we were on. Okay, okay. That's enough negative talk about all the new COVID protocols. Let's talk about embarkation and debarkation. In August, when we were on the Carnival Horizon, embarkation took maybe five minutes, and you would have seen me talk about that in my Carnival Horizon vlog series. It was a small little snippet, but I do talk about how fast and how easy embarkation was, but we later found out why. So we were in Bimini, and it was our first port day. It was actually the very next day right after sail away and uh man when i tell you i like getting off the ship especially because we had our ss sapona excursion we had breakfast it was a little bit past when we were supposed to get off and i was like oh man now we're gonna have a line we got down to debark the ship and when i tell you there was nobody there usually it's like a brawl everybody's trying to get off you know and it was really awesome and i actually was kind of wondering why was this so easy? And then I realized not a lot of people wanted to get vaccinated even to return to cruising. So there was only, I think it was 58% capacity on our sailing on the Carnival Horizon. And Freedom of the Seas, we never got the exact number, 
but it felt like there wasn't i've never sailed royal before until then but it felt like there wasn't many people on board for how royal caribbean usually is so those were positives i mean i believe ship sailings are still down the numbers are starting to go up uh maybe more 75 percent capacities filled now but if you are looking to cruise i would do it as soon as possible if you want to have an amazing cruise like we did back in august on the carnival horizon it really felt like we had the ship all to ourselves no lines it was easy to get off in port and everybody there just loved to cruise so we met so many new people it was a great time so this next topic is probably the biggest topic dining what was different on carnival we were able to serve ourselves in the buffet but on royal we were not uh, I don't know how much that has changed because honestly the cruise industry is just constantly changing right now with all of its protocols but other than that main dining was the same specialty dining was the same going to get your pizza uh, well royal you couldn't get your own ice cream didn't like that carnival you could and the people that were getting our ice cream on royal they definitely skimped us but aside from that dining felt the same okay so one of the last topics I wanted to jump into and honestly that's because cruising pretty much did feel the same for us aside from the mask mandate which if many of you did see Norwegian Cruise Line was the first major cruise line to drop their mask mandate so maybe the f other cruise lines will follow them but uh cleanliness both ships super clean they did a good job making us feel safe uh, they did a good job with our rooms they always made sure we were getting the best experience possible and we were very comfortable and had an excellent time on both sailings okay now I am going to wrap this video up because I wanted to keep it super simple I just wanted to touch on the points that I felt were a little different to pre-pandemic cruising but overall, if you are fully vaccinated and you don't mind wearing a mask in some areas on the ship, go on a cruise. Treat yourself. They're super cheap right now. And I know one of the risks that you do have booking your cruise is being turned away from some ports that are on your itinerary. But if you're like us, we don't mind staying on the ship. I mean, we do love going into port. We have our Mardi Gras sailing coming up on February 26th, two and a half weeks away from me recording this. And we have San Juan, Grand Turk, and Amber Cove on our itinerary. I'm hoping we don't get a turned away from any of those because we love all of those ports. And I will have a huge Carnival Mardi Gras vlog series coming up. So if you guys want to see an update on what cruising during the pandemic is like, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. I love cruises. I love adventures. I love travel. I hope you guys start to join me on more of my adventures. All right, guys, be safe and cruise on.